Welcome to Love and Learn, a show where we explore best-selling books and distill them down into life-changing concepts that are digestible, actionable, and healing to engage with, even if you don't have the time to read. I'm your host, Jessica Flint, a transformational leader that will help you live a healthier and wealthier life from the inside out. By pressing play, you're choosing to prioritize your self-care, nurture your self-love, and deepen your spiritual growth. I'm here to guide you week by week as we shift your mindset, transform your habits, and unlock more confidence, joy, and vitality so you can thrive in your personal and professional life. Let's get started. Welcome to the very first episode of Love and Learn. It feels extra special to have you here with me today for the start of this new show. Now, this show is designed to take your healing from theory to practice to mastery. Love and Learn is all about the union of science and soul, which will be reflected in the books we cover each month. While I personally have a graduate degree in the physical sciences and have always been a total nerd uh, and have excelled in this area academically, and I do believe there is great merit to evidence-based research, I have to be real and say that science has not got me through the hardest and darkest periods of my life. Spirituality has gotten me through the hardest and darkest periods of my life. And also spirituality has brought me the most bliss, the most satisfaction. So I am really a spiritual aspirant and believe so much in spirituality and the principles behind it. And even one of the most genius scientists of all time, Albert Einstein, has been quoted to say, the more I study science, the more I believe in God. And there are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. Now, this is a perfect segue into our first featured book on Love and Learn. We are covering A Return to Love, Reflections on the Principles of A Course in Miracles by Marianne Williamson. A Return to Love was released back in 1992, and the book gained significant popularity and hit the New York Times bestselling list, particularly after Marianne Williamson appeared on the Oprah Winfrey show. Oprah was like super hot for this book and they discussed it. Oprah has since brought her on numerous times and this has really helped cement this book as a spiritual classic because of its focus on the principles of A Course in Miracles. Now, if you haven't heard of A Course in Miracles, you'll definitely learn more about it as a listener of Love and Learn. Uh, But to give you a little briefing on it, A Course in Miracles is a spiritual self-study program designed to guide people toward inner peace and spiritual transformation. It was first published in 1976, and the teachings are often considered a form of modern-day scripture, though the course itself is non-dominational and does not adhere to any specific religion. A Course in Miracles has no copyright on it, which is very fortuitous for, for this show because its contents can be freely shared. Like, I'm able to verbatim share the text of A Course in Miracles. And that is what I plan on doing each Sunday on Love and Learn outside of our featured book. And books that I have on the docket are The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown, Intuitive Eating by Evelyn Triboli and Elise Resch, The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho, Existential Kink by Carolyn Lovewell, Loving What Is by Byron Katie. So, I mean, that's just the start. There's so many books that we're going to cover on Love and Learns. I hope you get excited for that. So when we have our featured book that we're we're going through, on top of that, each week I want to share one of the daily lessons that comes from The Course of Miracles. Um, That way you have time to integrate it. And I also want to spice it up a bit and push myself outside of my comfort zone because this is something that I feel really called to do. I feel really pulled in this direction. I will be mixing in improv with one of my beloved sketch characters whose name is Miracle Mike. (laughs) He also has the nickname Mike Drop Mike. Uh, But I will be sharing the lesson in, in my narration and then Mike will kind of do a little improv set. So just so you know, it's going to get a little bit, <laughs> our Sundays are going to get a little interesting. You know, this part of Love and Learn is meant to be more lighthearted. Meanwhile, sharing a spiritual principle that you can put into practice each week. And these daily lessons are pretty short. So I'm thinking this will be about like a 10 to 
this will be around like a 10 minute show every Sunday. We'll see how, how it goes and flows here, but that, that's the overall intention for it. Uh, many people have had huge transformations when they go through A Course in Miracles. I personally have had major shifts myself when I, I do the work, especially in around forgiveness and acceptance. So it is a tool for deeper inner work. And for many people, it helps them overcome guilt, anxiety, and fear by changing how we perceive ourselves and the world around us. So the lessons I will cover on Sunday will focus on shifting your perception from love to fear and help you shed the ego's focus on judgment, attack, and separation to a focus on forgiveness, love, and unity. Now, I want to make this really clear from the top. If you buy a copy of Return to Love or A Course in Miracles, uh, there will be Christian terminology in it, the talk of the Holy Spirit, God, and Jesus. And this is where open-mindedness is really great. So Marianne Williamson, she is one of the most widely known teachers of A Course in Miracles, and she is Jewish. What I want to be really clear about is Love and Learn is not about a single religion. My intention for Love and Learn is to be a safe space for all spiritual seekers to learn from some of history's greatest mystics and spiritual leaders. So whatever religion you practice, you are welcome here. If you don't practice a religion, you are welcome here. All religions and spiritual paths are welcome. I personally believe no single religion has a monopoly on truth and that personal spiritual exploration combined with communal respect, acceptance, and love, that's what leads to growth. I mean, if we look at all these wars that are waged over religion, we really want to step back and be like, all right, let's pull apart the dogma from the universal truths, okay? That's that's a big thing for me here. I, I am all about open-mindedness to each their own, live and let live. Uh, I'm not here to judge anyone, but I also want to be a safe space for people to open up their spirituality, to deepen the relationship to the divine, to God. Now, speaking of the word God and divine, on Love and Learn, especially on our Soul Sundays, where we will be diving into the text on A Course in Miracles, I will be saying the word God, Holy Spirit, and divine. And when I'm saying this, I'm referring to a force of unconditional love that exists within each and every one of us that is not separate from us. It is part of us. And if the word God for you doesn't sit well, I totally understand. I used to have a similar experience where it just that that word was like way too loaded for me. You may find other words like the universe, the divine, the creator, source, spirit, love, consciousness, the infinite, a higher power, or whatever terminology, nature, you know, whatever terminology works best for you, I encourage you to substitute it accordingly. Don't get trapped in the wording, right? Don't lose sight of the deeper message. The deeper message is this force that connects us all, this force that is of unconditional love, is of a higher order. With that said, let's dive into our first concept that we're exploring here on the book, A Return to Love. The idea is that every decision we make comes from either love or fear. Literally think about it, it's love or fear. According to Marianne Williamson, quote, the book is written as a guide to the miraculous application of love as a balm on every wound. Whether our psychic pain is the area of relationships, health, career, or elsewhere, love is a potent force, the cure, the answer, end quote. So love is the answer. Fear is not the answer. <laughs> Love is the answer. Marianne writes, quote, Love is what we're born with. Fear is what we have learned here, end quote. Now, this is a simple concept, but when you really think about it, it's life-changing. We've been conditioned by our fears. As we grew up, year after year, we became more and more conditioned by our fears. Fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of not being good enough, fear of other people's judgments of us. But love, according to Marianne, is our natural state. Love exists within us. It can never be destroyed. It can only be obscured. I like to think about it as dark storm clouds that can obscure a blue sky. Clouds are symbolic of our fear that clouds over our natural state of love. But the natural state of love is there. It's always there. Now, I do think it's important for us to get on the same page of what 
does love actually mean, right? If I'm using this word, often we think about romantic love or familial love. It is not that love. What we're speaking about is a higher form of love what some might call God's love, or I like to call it agape love. It is an unconditional love. This is love without conditions, love that embraces all, regardless of actions, appearances, or circumstances. It's a non-judgmental love. It's the type of love that is infinite and universal, available to everyone, not whether you have less or you have more. This love doesn't judge or limit. It simply is. Everybody has this love. So this love is always available to us and it is the key to moving past fear. So the goal here is to go from a thought system that's based in fear to a thought system that's based in love. When your dominant thoughts are fear, you're going to live out more fearful conditions and circumstances. When your dominant thoughts are love, you're going to live out more conditions and circumstances of love. So I've really wanted to put some like principles around this so we can really understand like when is fear operating in your life? You know it's operating in your life when you are stuck, when you're consistently stuck and you're like, I'm stuck. Okay, boom, bing, 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 fear. Okay, you have low energy. Everything just feels super hard to do. Okay, fear. You're full of anxiety. Worry, judgment, resentment, self-doubt, fear. You know fear is dominating when you lack confidence or you avoid taking risks or change or you have a scarcity mindset or you're overly controlling and perfectionistic. This is all fear. Generally, it is results in a mistrust of the future. The future is scary as opposed to trusting in the future. Now, love, on the other hand, is when you feel a sense of inner peace, compassion, and kindness. You have connection to others, gratitude, forgiveness, joy, and playfulness, open-mindedness, and acceptance, self-care, and an abundance mindset. This is love. You can start to see, where are you at? Take that pulse. Are you stuck? Are you have low energy? Are you full of anxiety, worry, judgment, resentment, self-doubt? Is fear dominating your life? Do you have a lack of confidence? Avoid risks or change? Have a scarcity mindset? Are you overly controlling and perfectionistic? Do you mistrust the future? My dear, you're in fear. Okay, on the other hand, do you feel a sense of inner peace? Compassion, kindness, connection to others, gratitude, forgiveness, joy and playfulness, open-mindedness and acceptance, self-care and abundance mindset. Where are you at there? Are you embodying love? This is what we want to start to create and embody in our life. According to Marianne Williamson, quote, the spiritual journey is the relinquishment or unlearning of fear and acceptance of love back into our hearts, end quote. She goes on to say, quote, love in your mind produces love in your life. Fear in your mind produces fear in your life. A shift in how we think about life produces a shift in how we experience it end quote. So it's pretty simple when we think about it, like love in your mind produces love in your life. It's almost like, okay, when I am embodying love, I create more love in my life. When I'm embodying fear, I create more fear in my life. Think about a recent decision or situation in your life, whether it's a recurring situation or uh, or not, that stressed you out. Maybe it was about your job or a relationship, your food choices, your appearance, or your health. And ask yourself, was I acting out of love or fear? More often than not, fear dominates our thinking. When we're in fear, we contract. We don't think clearly. And our energy becomes scattered. We kind of can go into a panic mode and, and think all these fearful thoughts about the future. I always like to think about the word anxiety as future-oriented fear. Now, love, when we choose love, we end up opening ourselves to more inner peace. And the whole concept as we go through a return to love is that you know it's working. You know you've reached miracle land. You know you are experiencing miracles in your life 
when you're able to experience inner peace. So what used to be so conflictive and combative and difficult and like just hard for you now is peaceful. You know, I think about my relationship to food. I struggled with an eating disorder for many, many years of my life. There was so much fear in it. I feared food. I feared my body. I feared like not working out. I feared so much around. I was so controlling. And now I'm very peaceful with food. We don't have any issues. I had a big shift in perception. I went from fear-based thinking around food in my body to love-based thinking around fear in my body. And it made all the difference. What I'm actively working on now is, is in the realm of relationships. I have some pretty strong wiring in my nervous system to equate love with danger, it, like romantic love with danger. So with that said, I, I, that I notice I'm much more in a fear-based thought system than a love-based thought system when it comes to uh, relationships, when it comes to a romantic relationship. I believe there is no shame in our recovery game. So I did have some pretty big traumas that happened early on in my childhood, which I'm compassionate around knowing that my nervous system is not of an average nervous system of someone who didn't have those traumas. So for me, the goal is to start to bring safety to my nervous system. And I can do that through love, right? So as love brings more safety, we experience that both in our mind and in our body. I actually have experienced a shift in it. I, on a body level, on a physiological level, I have been able to experience the changes that have come when I move from fear-based thinking to love-based thinking. You know, take a moment to reflect. Where in your life have you been making decisions out of fear? And how would things look if you shifted to love instead? You know, press pause or jot this down or leave a voice memo. Just a few thoughts. Because this simple act of awareness can start a powerful transformation. Where in your life have you been making decisions out of fear? How would things look if you shifted to love instead? And I want to take this a little bit deeper to make it more actionable. So you may be wondering, well, how do I start choosing love as a practice well all of the things that i mentioned earlier the inner peace compassion and kindness connection to others gratitude forgiveness joy and playfulness open-mindedness acceptance self-care and abundance mindset these are all things that we will be covering on love and learn like i hope you know love and learn is is about this it's about how do we how do we prioritize our self-care and our self-love how do we create this in our life and make this habitual make this commonplace. But one practice is to you know, ask yourself regularly, am I coming from a place of love or fear right now? You can use this in any situation, whether you're making decisions, having a difficult conversation, or even dealing with self-doubt. And as I mentioned before, Marianne says, quote, love in your mind produces love in your life, end quote. The shift starts within you. And another question to reflect on is what would change in your life if you consistently chose love over fear? So imagine one area where this could have a profound effect. Could it be in your relationships, your career, your health, how you see yourself? And finally, I want to leave you with three actionable steps that you can take to apply the concept of love over fear in your own life. First, Pause and reflect. I mentioned this earlier. When you're faced with a decision, ask yourself, is this coming from a place of fear or love? Notice where fear shows up in your body. And also notice where love shows up in your body. How how do these two different states manifest in the body? You know, I personally find that fear is more contractive and heavy. And my mind starts spinning a lot with fear. Whereas love is more expansive and light and there's a peacefulness to it. There really is. There's this inner peace, which I'm really excited about doing more of this work around a return to love and and A Course in Miracles to help you have these shifts in perception that lead to more inner peace. 
Now, the second thing you can do is daily affirmations. You could start your day by reminding yourself that love is your natural state. A simple affirmation like, I choose love over fear today, can reframe your mindset. And third, acts of kindness. Love doesn't always have to be this grand gesture. Even small acts of kindness are ways to reaffirm that you're living from love rather than fear. This can be kindness directed towards yourself, as in self-care, and it can also be directed towards others. And as we finish our very first episode of Love and Learn, remember what Marian said, quote, the spiritual journey is the unlearning of fear and the acceptance of love back into our hearts, end quote. As we practice choosing love, we step closer to the truest version of ourselves, the more authentic version of ourselves, because we're no longer fearing the judgment and opinions of others. Each day, we have the power to choose love over fear. As you move through your day, notice where fear might be holding you back. What would it feel like to make the conscious choice of love instead? I encourage you to experiment with this and see how it shifts your experience, both personally and professionally. So thank you for tuning in to Love and Learn. We will be continuing our exploration of a return to love in the coming weeks. If this episode spoke to you, it would mean so much to me if you took a minute to extend an act of kindness my way and leave a five-star rating and review. If you've already left a review in the past, it would be amazing for you to leave another one for Love and Learn. It helps support the show. And if you know someone who could benefit from more love in their life, share this episode. Remember, love in your mind produces love in your life. And as I always like to say, may compassion light the path you are on and courage keep you on it. Until next time, keep choosing love and never stop learning. 